Hello viewers, thank you very much for watching Gifts TV. Today's video, I'll be focusing on how to write a book. Okay, so those who are looking for opportunity, step step by step guide to follow to write a book, then this particular video is for you. I'm going to share experience, okay, because I'm an author of several books. You can see through your screen, all these books were written by me, okay? I authored all these books, Issues of Program Implementation, Time instability and family lifestyles in Ghana, its implication on development and labor market. We also have digital economy and globalization. Okay, a very uh, sure pathway for African development. We also have theory and practice of program design and evaluation. We also have life expectancy in Africa. So we have principles and practices of healthcare economics. I have several other books too that is on the way coming. Okay, so I'm going to share my experience about how to write a book, okay? Sometimes a very good and selling books as well. Okay, I also look into some uh, website that also guide, okay, emerging scholars on how to write a book. All right, to start with, I would like to begin with my experience. You know, if you want to write a convincing book, first of all, come out with a concept that will hold your interest throughout the process. You need to devote time. You need to make sure that you have time to write. Develop the habit of writing, okay? If you're able to do that, then the journey will be very smooth for you, okay? If you're a lazy type, then this particular job is not for you, okay? But if you want to grow, okay, uh, grow your professional skill set, you want to grow academically, then you need to cultivate the habit of writing. You need to develop that habit of writing, okay? Perfection shouldn't be an enemy of progress. You know, there is no 100% research book or whatever it is, all right? But you need to start a process. You need to begin something so that at the end of the day, you should be able to, you know, come out with something that is more convincing. And sometimes you can also ask colleagues, peers to also review the book for you, okay? Yes, first of all, you need to set a place that you every day you go there to at least put down one or two words okay okay set up a place a room that is going to be your writing room okay it's going to be your private writing room it could be in an office it could be you know a, a small space you know in your apartment or in your house or you can have a library where you go there to write if you're able to create that thing, it's going to help you and motivate you to do the right thing because you need a room that will give you the peace of mind, that will give you the mindset to think, brainstorm, and write. Because writing, okay, involves creativity. Okay, you need to have a creative skill set. Okay, so that the dynamics in writing is you need to develop through your creative skill set. Okay, so you need to be very creative in terms of thinking, in terms of content, and in terms of the information that you put for your audience to read. It's very important. And when you're about to write, think about your audience. Okay, who are your target readers? Who are your target sphere? Okay, it's very, very important to do all these things before you start writing. Okay, and before you start writing too, as I stated earlier, you have to come out with a concept that will hold your interest throughout the process. So once you develop the concept, then you have to research around the concept so that you are able to come out with an outline okay, that will serve as the content for the book. So once you're able to create specific content that you want to use to create the entire book, okay, then you take every concept or the content or the chapter okay, element that you have created as an outline to research around so that you get details, topics, or headings that you can use to create. But first of all, you need to think about your audience. What do you want your audience to read about every chapter? Okay, what are the major um, idea or the central theme that you want your audience to learn from? Why are you writing that particular chapter? What is so special or important about that chapter? All this thing needs to be taken into consideration so that at least at the end of the day, when you're able to come out with about five chapters, 10 chapters, eight chapters, you know that this is what you want to achieve. It's the skill set that you want to instill in your readers. Okay, what do you want your readers to learn from the book? 
So every chapter, you need to break those expertise or competencies down so that out of it, you help to help you to outline the chapters so that only they, if readers read all the chapters that you have developed for them, then we're able to develop that skill set. All these things need to put, put into place so that at least you, it can help you to develop your chapters. So that is basically it for practical sense of view. So let's quickly look into uh, a website that are also guiding emerging scholars to do well. All right, so when it comes to this particular website, Masterclass, they are helping emerging uh, authors and researchers to come out to it, the easy way to write. So we have the writing tips that you can go. So when it comes to this website, you can learn a lot for yourself, okay? So these are the steps that they put down. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? And eight, nine. So they have nine steps, okay, that they have published for all emerging scholars and authors to follow through so that you can create a book for yourself. First of all, they, they stated that if you want to write a book, you need to establish a consistent writing space. As I mentioned earlier, you need to have a room. Okay, if you are going to write a great book, you are you are going to need a great space to write. It doesn't have to be a soundproof room with a standing view, but all that you need is a quiet place, okay, free of distractions, where you can consistently get good writing done, as I stated earlier. Okay, you need a place that will give you peace of mind to so that you can brainstorm and think. Okay, that will gonna enable you to do much. Okay, it could be in home office or in your couch where in case your children doesn't come in there, okay, your wife doesn't come in or your husband doesn't come in here to disturb you, okay? Yeah, so the environment where you work should allow you to focus uninterrupted for hours at a time. So for example, if you had devoted two hours for writing, within that period, you should not be interrupted, okay? Very important. The second step is you need to hone in on your book ideas, okay? The concept you want to write on, you need to brainstorm, okay? So that you can come out with the outline. All right? Perhaps you already know precisely what your book is about, what you want to achieve. Maybe you are trying to decide between the millions of different big ideas. Maybe all you have to is, is an image for the book cover, okay? But either way, you need to ask yourself a few simple questions before you start writing. What is my book about? Okay, what do you want your audience to get from the book? Okay, yes, what do you want to communicate? Why is the story interesting or important? Why is the book important? Why is the substance in the book, in the various chapters important or interesting? What attracted you to this particular idea in the first place? Okay, who want to read my book? Okay, and who are your target audience? Who will want to read it? Your target audience are also very important. So if you are still searching for a book idea or struggling with maybe a writer's blog, you need to always brainstorm, come out a concept that will hold your interest to the process. Once you're able to come out with the idea that you know that this idea is going to sell out, it's going to help your readers to understand what you want to communicate or the information that you want to put across, then you need to start your outline of the book. Okay, so the third step is that you outline your story. Good writers spend plenty of time outlining before writing a book. You need to develop your table of content, outline. Outlines can be detailed chapters outline, you know, so that is you need to develop your table of content. That is very, very important. So once you develop your table of content, then you need to also read around, research around, do your research about each content that you want to look at so that it will help you to come up with detailed headings, subheadings for every chapter, okay? And this is going to help you what you want your audience to also get from every chapter. So research is an essential tool for professional writers. So if you are writing a nonfiction book, you will likely want to spend time in libraries and archives, absorbing everything that you can read about your subject area or the concept that you want to write about or the research idea. Research is also helpful for fiction writers as well. Okay, so it can provide helpful context for a time period and the character that you want to write about. Okay, so all you need to do is read books or listen to podcasts 
that cover the subject matter that you are trying to write for your audience. It's similar to what the idea that you want to write. You need to read related books. You need to read related concept books, research. At least to give you a broader picture about, okay, the tax ahead of you. Okay, so that you can situate your idea into a research or the literature gap. Because the concept that you're going to write, okay, what must motivate that concept, must inform that concept that you want to write is the recent gap, that is the literature gap, okay? That will make it so special, okay? Because one, there's a gap, the need for that particular knowledge, people will love to read your book, all right? And the topic also will be very interesting because they would like to know what is there, what you found, okay, for that particular research idea. So they're very important. You need to read research around it so that it can help you to detail your outline. So once you do some extensive research about a concept and the outline that you have made, you start writing and stick to their routine. Okay? You have to start writing and stick to your routine. Try certain daily word count target to keep you on track. Try certain daily, daily count uh, words. Okay? A target so that it will help you to keep track. You can also schedule writing time and put it on your calendar so that you won't skip it. Very important. Sometimes you can ask a friend or fellow writers or maybe a colleague to hold you accountable by sending them updates on how much you've written that day. Okay. So that at least they will be able to help you to stay on track and monitor your progress. Okay. Yeah, especially. Uh, those that, you know, finding time to write is a big problem. You know, try to find uh, maybe a friend, okay, that you trust most, okay, so that those persons can help you hold you accountable for this particular task if you really want to write. Because if you're a lazy type, you can, this tax is not for you, okay? But if you want to change your attitude or your behavior towards writing, because before you can do a very good writing, you need to develop that habit of writing. The culture, you need to build it. If not, you cannot do uh, a book writing. So once you're able to do that and stick to a particular routine, maybe every day you're going to write um, two pages, okay? Maybe you're going to devote two hours for every day in writing, okay? Then you'll have to study it the time period, maybe from 8 to 10 p.m. or maybe from 7 to 9 p.m. Then after that, you go to bed. You need to develop that kind of habit. If not, you cannot do a book for yourself. You cannot come out with a complete book for yourself. Then the sixth step is that you need to finish your first draft. As you are writing your first draft, you encounter self-doubt, lack of motivation, and writer's blood. As I said, okay, okay, perfection shouldn't be an enemy of progress. Okay, that is normal. Okay, so whenever you feel stuck, try going back to your outline or your research for inspiration. Okay, motivate yourself how far you, you've gone in terms of your writing. Okay, maybe assuming that you are writing uh, 10 chapters and you've written four. Go back and motivate yourself that you've done well even writing that four chapters. Okay, that will help you because self-motivation is very key to book writing. Okay, try to manage your expectations as well. Your first book is likely not going to be a generational masterpiece. Okay, that shouldn't be... A problem, as I said, perfection for your first time shouldn't be an enemy of progress. But moving forward, you need to ensure continuous improvement. If you compare yourself to literary great ones, then it may go into self and disincentive to you. But you should be yourself, okay? You should compare yourself to what you've written. You shouldn't compare yourself to others, okay? You are not in competition with anyone. But what all, all that you need to do for yourself is to ensure that you have the self-motivation. That is very important. Motivate yourself, encourage yourself, okay, so that you can stay on track. All right. Then once you have your first draft written down, you need to revise and edit it. So every good book goes through many rounds of revision. Okay, you can endure the editing process yourself or ask a friend or professional editor to help you. Okay, many of times you need to contract a professional editor to look at it so that they can check grammar, can check all sort of um, the edit um, styles, you know. Yes, they can check the proofreading, okay, uh, the copycat, you know, they can check everything in terms of stylistics 
you know, that will help you to be able to come out with a very book, good book. Either way, you need to have an honest or ruthless eye on your writing so that you can know what needs, okay, real work. That is very important. Then the eighth step is that you write your second draft. So once you go through that editing, the second draft is your opportunity to apply the revisions and edits from the professional editor. Okay, it is also a chance to consider larger and variating questions that can only be answered after you already completed your first draft. We need to take note of that. Okay, the second draft is you incorporating all review comment and you know editing comment as well. Okay, some of the questions that will be raised during the stage of editing is so going to help you to revise the book well. Then once you have your second draft, you know, your second draft will definitely, the second draft is also a chance to address more granular questions. Does the book have a strong opening home? Okay, and impactful conclusion. So the second draft need to address all these key elements, all weaknesses, okay, that through the, re the review or during the editing stage came out, you should be able to address all of them so that you get come out with a very good book. Once your edit is ready, you've done all the revision, then the last stage is sent to publishers. Publish your book. Once you have finished your final draft, okay, it's time to publish it. Okay, with the rise of online marketplaces and e-readers like the Kindle self-publishing, it's easier than ever. But well, you can also go through the normal traditional route okay where you can submit a book proposal to a publishing house ideally with the help of a literary agent okay so once you have successfully published all that is left for you to sit back relax and start working on your second book but once you draft your book you can send a proposal to publishing agencies okay and they will review your proposal and see if it's something that is within the area of their concentration, then they can consider your proposal and they will go into contract with you, you know? Yes. Or if you don't want to go that route, okay, make sure that you have contracted um, reviewers and you also have also contracted good editors that are going to help you to come out a very good book so that you can contact Kendall and other self-publishing agencies so that you can publish it yourself as well. But the best way is to go through the various uh, book proposal because they already have established reviewers. They have established um, editors, good ones, you know, those that are also going to help you to come out with um, what do you call it, um, uh, reviewing the entire book and guide you throughout the process. So if you're able to get a contract from a publisher, okay, traditional style, then that is the best way to go. Thank you very much for watching Gibbs TV. Okay, if you want more information, okay, I'll put the links in the chat so that you can go there to read more for yourself. Thank you, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you.